And now, from 12 Studios, this is News 12 Now. Today is Tuesday, May 14th. Welcome to News 12 Now. I'm Kylie Dudman. New on 12 Now, an Ida Bell man who worked as a behavioral health counselor for the Choctaw Nation is headed to federal prison for child sex abuse. 40-year-old Bradley Hill was sentenced to three years in prison after pleading guilty to sexual abuse of a minor. Court records show Hill was a counselor at the Choctaw Wind Horse Family Counseling in Idabel and sometimes worked with sexual assault victims. State records show his LPC candidate license is still active. The Choctaw Nation says it plans to also prosecute Hill in a tribal court. Meanwhile, in Lamar County, Paris police are investigating after a homeowner noticed a parked vehicle near her mailbox and the driver messing with the mailbox. According to the owner, once the vehicle left, she found a plastic baggie which, in the mailbox, which later was confirmed as meth. The homeowner says she did not know the vehicle or the person leaving the drugs. And this week is National Law Enforcement Week, and there are several ways you can celebrate. Tomorrow, the Ardmore Police Department and Carter County Sheriff's Office is having a memorial ceremony and a lunch to honor fallen officers. And the Gunner Police Department is holding a fundraiser where you buy a yard sign to show your support. Now coming up later on News 12 Now, we'll also speak about how our nation is honoring law enforcement with police weeks and memorials in D.C. It was a beautiful and cool morning to start and uh, that definitely signaled a beautiful day ahead, which we are currently experiencing lots of sunshine and very comfortable conditions after what seems just like an endless barrage of showers and thunderstorms out there across Texoma. Here's what you can expect through the rest of your day today. Lots of sunshine and um, yeah, temperatures on the warmer side of things. But hey, we have a northwesterly wind, which is keeping things a little bit less humid. So uh, definitely a great day to get outside, maybe do some yard work or just get some fresh air and enjoy because uh, here's the thing. While tomorrow will be nice, it is uh, going to be a little bit warmer or more humid tomorrow. And that leads up to a wet and stormy Thursday with some heavy rain and maybe some severe weather on the way. A hot and dry weekend following. We'll have the full forecast here in a little bit, but back to you, Kylie. All right, thank you, Brian. Well, a driver was rescued from a near fatal flooding incident Sunday in Tioga. Just before 6 Sunday night, Tioga Fire responded to Horseshoe Road to find a delivery van truck, delivery truck washed off the road in rising waters. Tioga Assistant Fire Chief Elvin Fisk tells us more about what happened. He was a little shook up, uh, kind of scared because the water was rising and uh, he was about to go into the back doors of the uh, of the truck when we got him out. Tioga Fire says the incident could have been prevented if the road closure barricades were not removed. A game changing opportunity is available at the Cartwright Community Resource Center. Thanks to a $15,000 rural Oklahoma community grant, the nonprofit center now offers face to face free GED classes and testing. Classes are Monday and Friday evenings. Director for the Cartwright Community Resource Center, Dottie Holman, hopes this will provide residents with better opportunities. 90% of people that pass their GED test go further to maybe going into college or a job training program. So we're real proud of the opportunities uh, that are, well, get to are that available point. here. I'll yeah. get to that point. You are. I will. As of yesterday evening, there are still spots available for the free classes and testing. For more information, you can visit this story on our website at kexii.com. Nearly two weeks after what is traditionally College Decision Day, millions of students are still unable to commit to a school. Now, this is affecting students from not just Texoma, but all over the country. The cause? Computer glitches in the U.S. Department of Education's newly overhauled financial aid system. CBS's Meg Oliver has the story. With high school graduation just weeks away, anxiety was mounting for senior JoJo Henderson. That's where you belong. <laughs> the 18-year-old from Pittsburgh, Texas, couldn't commit to college without knowing his financial aid. I'm frustrated because it's just like you do everything that you're supposed to do, 
and then you have to wait on the government to catch up. Henderson filled out the free application for federal student aid, known as FAFSA, almost five months ago. He finally received his financial information last week, after some college decision deadlines. Typically, the Department of Education releases the forms on October 1st, then sends the students data to colleges within one to three days of submission to calculate aid. This year, the application forms came out three months late. It's estimated more than a quarter of colleges have still not sent aid packages. Did you ever think of giving up, maybe not going to college? Yeah, many times, actually. Really? Um, I was just, like, so tired of waiting. Mm -hmm. New Jersey so, high school senior Jalen James finally received her aid package close to the decision deadline. My biggest advice is to not give up. Sarah Urquida is oversees college counseling for thousands of public school students in the Dallas area. Ask for extensions. Ask if deposits for housing are refundable. Ask for anything they possibly can to help make a decision, but don't opt out at this point in the process. A FAFSA fiasco that's still not finished. Meg Oliver, CBS News, Wayne, New Jersey. Well, as we say hello to the new Denison mayor and council members, we also say goodbye to the outgoing leaders. At Monday's special city council meeting in Denison, new mayor Robert Crawley that you see right here and a new council members were officially sworn into duty one of which became the city's new mayor pro tem. City councilor for Play 6 at large, Teresa Adams. She says she looks forward to what Mayor Crawley's priorities are. I look forward to doing the best job I can possibly do as, as the next mayor of Denison. We hit, we've had some really great mayors previously, and I hope I can do half as well as they have done. Outgoing mayor Janet Gott was sworn in as Denison's first female mayor back in 2018 and before her time as leader, she served on city council for five years. And new place for city councilman Spence Redwine was not in attendance and will be sworn in at another time. And as we just saw, several women are extremely involved in the highest level of government here in Texoma. So how can more environments give women, specifically mothers, more support? Fox News correspondent Chanley Painter takes a closer look. While Mother's Day is a time to honor the mother figures in our lives, business experts say it's not just families that should show support to moms. Citing how it's important for companies to understand the challenges facing mothers in the workplace, especially new parents. <coughs> According to Allison Gabriel of Purdue University, one of the biggest concerns working women have is how they could be perceived by going on maternity leave. I think there's a misconception that going on maternity leave is some kind of break or vacation. While the Pregnancy Discrimination Act of 1978 offers mothers legal protections at work, Gabriel encourages managers to go one step further. Becoming a mom is a huge identity shift for women. And so by acknowledging that something really momentous happened, that's a really important signal to mothers coming back into the workplace that people recognize that that shift has happened. This show of support can also be emotionally helpful for new mothers facing health complications upon returning to the office. Postpartum depression, the, the estimates for women, they vary depending on the source, but on average what we tend to see is about 15% of individuals who have babies are diagnosed. Gabriel says a postpartum depression diagnosis can occur at some point in the first year after giving birth. So that means it's not just important to support people right when they re-enter the workplace, but throughout the entirety of that first year and beyond. Gabriel also suggests companies that show mothers they care about their work and home life have better odds of retaining those employees. I'm Chanley Painter, Fox News. The United Nations condemns a deadly attack on a U.N. convoy in Gaza. A spokesman for the world body says the convoy was clearly marked when it was attacked on Monday, killing an Indian staff member. The U.N. says Israeli authorities were informed about the planned movements. During a briefing today in Gen Gen Geneva, Rolando Gomez said there's really nowhere safe in Gaza at the moment. 
The U.N. says the incident marked the first time that a U.N. international staff member has been killed since Israel launched a military offensive in Gaza in response to the October 7th Hamas attacks. Federal officials warned that foreign terrorist organizations and their supporters may target LGBTQ plus events and venues during the this June's Pride. The FBI and Department of Homeland Security are warning of heightened risk for violence. They highlighted June 12th in particular. Now, that's the eighth anniversary of the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando that killed 49 and wounded 53 people and garnered support from supporters of terrorist groups. The gun case against Hunter Biden is trying to nail down its details. A hearing was scheduled for today to discuss deadlines in the case set to go to trial on June 3rd. But Hunter Biden has raised the issue of facing two back to back trials. There is the gun case in a federal court in Delaware and then a separate tax case against him in California. That one already set for a late June trial. More dramatic testimony is expected today from the prosecutor star witness at former President Donald Trump's so-called hush money trial in New York. Michael George has the story. Michael Cohen is back on the stand at former President Donald Trump's criminal trial. Trump's former personal lawyer and fixer will face cross-examination from defense lawyers who are certain to attack his credibility. Cohen has admitted to lying under oath and has served jail time on charges related to hush money payments. You had a very mild-mannered, cooperative, yes ma'am, no ma'am type of witness, which is not the person that he is. Right. So we're going to see who he becomes on cross. Cohen testified for over five hours Monday, describing what prosecutors say were efforts to cover up alleged sexual encounters by paying off the women involved. He told the court Trump knew about the $130,000 payment he made to Stormy Daniels and directed Cohen to make it to keep her quiet before the 2016 election, telling him to just take care of it. Trump denies all of it. There was no crime. Everybody is saying there's no crime. Trump has pleaded not guilty to 34 charges that he falsified business records to disguise the reimbursements to Cohen, which were listed as legal fees. House Speaker Mike Johnson is among the high-profile GOP lawmakers attending the trial today. The president's actions in this matter were previously reviewed and no charges were filed. Why is that? Because there's no crime here. With Trump under a gag order, leading Republicans have been making appearances, showing their loyalty to the presumptive GOP presidential nominee. Mr. Trump, will you testify? Trump is the first former U.S. president to face a criminal trial. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Thank you for watching today's News 12 Now. Make sure to subscribe so you find out why Texoma turns to us. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook, where you'll see more social media exclusive content. Want more News 12 Now? Watch us live every weekday through the KXII app on your phone or TV and through our website.